Thank you for joining us. Please leave a comment. Let me know who joined us. You're welcome in the mighty name of Jesus. Please do leave a comment. Let me know who joined us. Thank you for joining us. You're welcome. You're welcome. You're welcome. Most high to the God of heaven, most high in all the earth, most high in heaven. Good morning. How are you doing? So glad to have you join us today. You're welcome. Family, thank you for joining us. You're all welcome. Please leave a comment. Let me know who's joining us. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Mata, thank you for joining us. Mata, you're welcome. Raisa, you're welcome. Good morning to you. How are you doing? I trust God we are all doing fine. Oh, good to know you're doing good, Sissy. I'm happy to know you're doing good. Come on, family. As you join, just leave a comment. Say hello. Let me welcome you. Martha, where are you joining us from? Shandine, you're welcome. Shandin Warren, you're welcome. Oh. <laughs> Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Sissy. Thank you. I tell you, everyone, <laughs> wherever we go, people talk about the hair. Like, how can a boy have such amount of hair? Oh. Martha is joining us from Poland. That's amazing. Thank you so much, Martha. You're welcome. Thank you for joining us all the way from Poland. You're welcome. 
I think you should be the first person joining us from Poland. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Kabayana balaraso branda la rushaka. Liza baraswana balarusha kaliana raso branda la rasiana. Most high in every nation. Most high in all the earth. Most high in every nation. Alleluia to God most high, most high to the God of heavens. Please worship God with me. Most high in all the earth. Most high, you reign in nations. Alleluia. To God, most high. Alleluia. Alleluia. thank you for today we thank you for each and everyone joining us today lord we thank you for Martha. we thank you for cc we thank you lord for Raisa. we thank you for everyone for shandine we thank you we thank you lord for michael we thank you for forgiveness and love we thank you for each and everyone joining us today for those who are coming those who are still to join us and those who will come much later to join us, to replay. Father, we say thank you. We thank you because your word never goes out and comes back without accomplishing the purpose of which it was sent. We thank you because in your presence there is fullness of, of, of joy and there is liberty. We thank you because someone is about to be filled with joy by reason of their presence here. We thank you because someone is about to be liberated from where the enemy has kept them captive. We thank you because someone is about to be given to receive a knowledge that will enable them to receive all the promises that you have that, that you have in store for them. Lord, we thank you. Liana Baraso Brandela Shaka. We thank you in advance, Lord, for lives that are about to be touched by you. We thank you in advance, Lord, for destinies that are about to be released. To, 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 we thank you in advance, Lord. Because we know that you are about to reveal yourself to someone. We know that you are about to encounter someone. We thank you, Father, for Christine. We thank you for Lini. We thank you for each and everyone joining us. Kabara Sobranda Laru Shaka. Lord, you said that the, the expectations of the righteous shall not be cut off. Father, we pray that as many as are joining us in this session, as many as we replay this session, Father, their expectations will not be cut off in the name of Jesus. Every promise, every promise that you have made over their lives, every hanging prophecy over their lives, by reason of this session, Lord, it is coming to pass in the name of Jesus. Lord, it is coming to pass in the name of Jesus. Your prophecies over their lives are coming to pass in the name of Jesus. Kala zobarasiana barushaka. Liza brunda la rushaka liara suhanda. 
Zibarara rasiana balarusha kaliara suana baruza. Liana bararasiana baruza brahanda la rushaka. Kabarasiana balarusha kaliana raso brahanda. Zibarara rasiana balarusha kaliara so brahanda. Zibarara rasiana alarusha kaliana rasuana barusha. Lize brunda la ruza brahanda la rasiana. Kabayana balarusha kaliana raso brahanda. Father, I pray for someone. Lize brunda la rusha kaliana raso brahanda. Kayana balarusha kaliana rasiana baruza. Lize branda la rusha kaliana rasiana. Kazaba rasuana barusha ka. Liana barasiana. God bless this someone in this session. Father, bless someone in this session. Father, bless someone in this session. God, touch someone in this session. Lisa Branda Larasiana. Let no one leave this session the same. Let no one leave this session the same. May we leave this session with our miracles. We, may we leave this session with our testimonies. May we leave this session testifying to the goodness of God. Yes, Lord. Oh, Kabaranana Balarushaka. Lize brunda la rusha kaliara so brahanda. Kabayana balaruza brahanda la rasiana. Oh, Father, we thank you. Most high, you are the God of heaven. Most high, in all the end. Most high, you are the king of nations. Hallelujah. To God, most high. Oh, Father, we thank you. Thank you, Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Oh, welcome each and everyone. Welcome, family. I believe I've mentioned everyone joining us today, either in prayer. Mercy. Thank you for joining us. Mercy. I've not mentioned you. Thank you. Christine, you're welcome. Lini, you're welcome. Forgiveness and love, you're welcome. Michael, welcome. Thank you so much. For joining us. You guys are simply amazing. Hallelujah. Romans chapter 4. Oh. Romans chapter 4. It's a long passage. It's a long passage. From verse 3 to verse 20. It's a long passage. We are going, we are going to be preach reading. Romans chapter 4 from verse 3 to verse 20. Oh, thank you, Lini. You are such a darling. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm reading from the Message Bible. I love the way the Message Bible puts it. Is there anyone here who has ever had a promise from God? Has God ever given you a prophetic word? Has God ever promised you something? I don't care how he promised you. Maybe you were studying the word of God and you received a word, a promise. You saw a promise and, 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 it, and it fell on you like, this is for me. Has God ever told you something while you were praying in your place of prayer? And God said, I am do, I'm about to bless you. God said, I'm about, you're about to get married. I'm about to pour out a blessing upon you. I'm taking you out of debt. I'm about to take you to your next level. I'm about, if, if God has not told you anything, then remember that God said, this is our month for elevation. That is a promise that God gave us. That is a promise that God gave us. And at the beginning of the year, God said, this is our year of double honor. That is a promise that he gave us. That is a promise. And if you have ever opened the scripture, you know that God has made some promises. God promised to bless the works of our hands. He says, whatsoever we touch shall prosper. Oh, Father, thank you for joining us. You're welcome. He says, by his stripes we were healed. So many promises God has given us. He says, the Father knows we need all these things. 
He says the Father will give us everything that we need. He says he has given us all that we need for life and godliness. He says our God shall supply all our, all our needs according to his riches in glory. He says eyes have not seen, ears have not, I have not heard. Neither has it occurred to the mind of man. What God has in store for, for his loved ones. So many promises we have in the word of God. So many promises. Amazing promises. But I began to have a problem when I realized that what I read in the word of God and what I receive as this is for me and the reality that I'm living are not the same. And I started wondering, like is Christianity, is it just religious acts? You go to church, you shout amen, you attend a live session and shout amen to every declaration that has been made. The Bible tells us we are seated together in heavenly places, far above principalities and powers. You know powers have been dealing with you. You know some principalities and powers have been dealing with you. Some weeks ago, we were seeing God as a sovereign God, like no other God, no other power, no other supreme being, no, no other super, no other um, principality is greater than him. But why is it that the devil is on your case? Oh, Michael, he showed you. Hallelujah. So I started having issues like, why is it that the things, that the promises of God, did you ever receive a prophetic word? Oh, I wish Agnes was here. A prophetic word that says God is about to pour out a blessing. God wants to make you a financial giant. And then everything went, went sour in your life. You lost everything. And you are asking, did, is it that I didn't hear God well? Is it that the man of God or the woman of God that prophesied did not hear God well? God said, this was my purpose. God said, I was going to fulfill this purpose. God said, I was going to preach the word of God to the ends of the earth. And how come I, even in my quarter, even in my small quarter where I am, I'm not even recognized. Realize that God has given us promises. The least of us has something that God had promised us. Either by direct prophecy, by, by the word of God, by maybe during your time of prayer, maybe you saw it in a dream, in a vision, in a revelation, however it came to you, but God has somehow told you something. And when I started asking questions, God told me there was also a man that found themselves in the same position where we are. His name was Abraham. And today we call him the father of faith. We say we are the descendants of Abraham. Let's see the process that Abraham took to get to the point where he actually obtained the promises of God. Hallelujah. Are we together? Are we together this far? Was that a good foundation for someone? Thank you for joining us. Please leave a comment as you join us. Let's know who is joining us. As you join us, just leave a comment. With that said, are, are we ready for the, found, for, for the word of God? Having laid that foundation. Okay, let me start from verse 3. It says, but the story we are given is a good, is a God story, not an Abraham story. We are going to break down the scripture, verse after verse, sentence after sentence. So I might not be a preacher today, I might come here to help you so that, just to teach you so that you can be able to obtain the promises of God. Yes, yes, Michael, you shall testify. So that I, I, I came here today to just give us a secret. Let's look at a case study. Someone that had the same promises from God. And at the end of the day, this person obtained the promises of God. And we are starting, and the very first sentence is that the story we are about to hear is not, it, it's a God story, it's not an Abraham story. It means that the main character in this story is God, is not Abraham. Oh, 
I, I, I can already dwell there and teach in the first place. Just that one sentence, I can, I, <laughs> I, I can, I can dwell there and teach us for some minutes. He says the story we are about to hear is not a, is a God story. It's not an Abraham story. It means it's not about what Abraham did. God is saying it's not about what Abraham did. It's about what God did to Abraham and through Abraham. What God did in Abraham to Abraham and through what Abraham. So it's not about what Abraham. The emphasis is not, is not in what Abraham did. So God is starting by establishing the fact that when it comes to the fulfillment of the promises of God, it is not about you. It is about God. It's not the, 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 the main thing, the main, the main character in the story. It's, you are not the main character in the story. God is the main character in the story. I told us here some time ago that when God comes to talk to man, God never talks to man like he was talking to a man. He talks to man like he was talking to himself. That's why if you say this is the purpose that God has given you and, or the vision that God has given you and that vision is something you can accomplish by yourself, then you didn't hear God. Because when God comes to give you his vision or to give you his purpose, to trust you with his purpose so that you can fulfill it, God doesn't tell you what you can do. He tells you what he wants to do through you. So God can actually be doing great things through you. Sydney, thank you so much for joining us. God can be doing great things. And until tomorrow, we'll remember Abraham. Oh, as a matter of fact, Abraham has a quartier in heaven. He has a jurisdiction in heaven. It's called Abraham's bosom. That's how influential he was. But the Bible starts, the verses that we are reading, they start by establishing the fact that this is not an, a, 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 a story about Abraham. The focus of this story is God. Estelita, Estelita, thank you so much for joining us. Sydney, you're welcome. You're welcome. Have we established that, that foundation? When God said he was going to bless you and make you a financial giant, in that story, it wasn't you are, you, are, you are not the main character. The main character is God. So meaning that if God is doing what he wants to do in your life, is if he's fulfilling the prophecy that he gave you, if he's fulfilling the promise that he gave you, it is not so that you can be exalted. It is so that he can be exalted. It is not so that you can be seen as great. It's so that he can be seen as great. If God said you are, you are you are getting married then know that only god can grant you the marriage and it is not so that you can be happy yes you are going to be happy of course you are going to be happy but it is so that glory can go back to god it is so that god can be seen through you god can be seen through your marriage god can be acknowledged through what he did for you so this story is not a story about it's not an abrahamic story it is a story about god it is a God story. Are we together this far? We are still in one verse. It's still just one sentence. God is going to help us. Those are a lot of chapters. A lot of verses, sorry. He says, what we read in the, what we read in the, in the scripture is, Abraham entered into what God was doing for him. And that was the turning point. Did you hear that? Let me not get excited. Let me read. Let me at least take verse by verse. Let me take verse after verse. It says, what we are reading in this scripture is that Abraham entered into what God was doing for him. And that was the turning point. He trusted God to set him right instead of trying to be right on his own. He says this is the story. Abraham stepped into what God was doing for him. The other day we were looking at divine replacement. We were looking at favor. And I mentioned to us. I, I told us that every time you are favored. Every time you are favored. 
It is so that you fulfill the, the purpose of God. Every time you are favored, it is for a particular purpose. Every time you are favored, it is for a particular reason. And I made it clear to us that there is a possibility of you being favored. And if you don't align yourself, if you don't fit yourself into the plan of God, you are going to miss it like Vashti. You are going to miss out like King Saul. You are going to miss it like, like Moses. Moses didn't finally enter the promised land. But that wasn't the initial intention of God. The initial intention of God was that he gets to the promised land. Was not to replace anyone. Was not to take anyone out of the palace. And this is God saying, Abraham... What Abraham did was that he fitted himself into what God was doing. He fitted himself into the will of God and the purpose of God for him. It means Abraham could have done the same thing. Another person, we saw that there was the father of Abraham, and that was Terah. And, and we saw that the, 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 the instruction that was given to Abraham was first of all probably given to Terah. But Terah failed to obey it. Terah disobeyed and stayed in Haran and did not get to the land of Canaan where God instructed him to go. So Terah did not fit himself into the promise of God. So the Bible says that Abraham did himself a favor by fitting himself into what God was doing. God can, let me start by presenting to you. God can tell you he wants to make you a financial giant. Oh my God, Pastor Rich, you are here. How could I not realize it? We are welcome, sir. Thank you for joining us. God, let me start by realizing that if God said he wanted to make you a financial giant, God has given man the right to choose. So you can choose to align yourself to get into what God wants to do, or you can choose to to step out of it. I explained to us that our father taught us that when we talk about destiny, there are people that are sitting and being comfortable because they are waiting for, the, for, for what God showed them to come to pass. And the Bible says, live a life that is worthy of the call you have received. So the moment you receive the call, you've got to live your life. You've got to live your life that is worthy of that call. So the moment God tells you, I want to do this in your life. I want to do this through you. I want you, to, I want to use you to be a blessing to the nations. The next thing that you've got to do is to step into that promise. Is to step into that promise. Is to step into that prophecy. Is to align yourself to the will of God. So you've got to live a life that is worthy of the prophecy that is hanging on your head. So the first thing that Abraham had to do was to get in line with the will of God. And how did he do that? Through obedience. The Bible says God came to him and started by telling him, just thank you for joining us. You're welcome. By telling him, leave your country, leave your, your brethren, leave your family, leave everyone, leave everything and go to a place I will show you. Abraham did not have to sit there and say, Father, show me the place first. Because that's the mistake that we made. Abraham said, okay, God, if that is what you want. Okay, I may not know the place, but I decide to fit myself into what. I don't know what you want to use me to do, but I just want to fit myself. If you have said it, that settles it. I don't know why you are interested in my marriage to say by this time next year, I am getting married. But I just align myself to what you are doing, to what you said you are doing. So what do you want me to do? So what is expected of me? How do I walk past this? God says he wants to make you a financial giant. And you are like, God, I don't understand why you want to bless me. I don't know why you want to bless me. But this is me. You can use me, make me, I accept, I align myself to your will. You can make me the financial giant. Are we together? Calm down. Otherwise, we'll not finish this scripture. People I'm preaching to. Melody, thank you so much for joining us, Melody. You're welcome. Verse 4, it says, if you are a hard worker and you do a good job, you deserve your pay. I love the message Bible. It says, if you are a hard worker and do a good job, you deserve your pay. You deserve your salary. It says, we don't call your wages a gift. If you are a hard worker and you did a good job, you, you, you deserve your salary. What is given to you at the end of the week, at the end of the month, is not a gift. It is a salary. You deserve it. You earned it. Let's hear what it says from there. It says, but if you see that the job is too big for you, that is something only God can do. <laughs> 
and you trust him to do it. You could never do it for yourself, no matter how hard and how long you worked well. That trusting him to do it is what gets you set right with God. By God, is a sheer gift. Let me break this down. I started by telling us that if God gives you a vision, a purpose, and, it's so, and it is something you can do by yourself, then you do not hear God. I established the fact that when God talks to you, he doesn't tell you what you can do. He tells you what he can do through you. So this is the Bible breaking it down further to tell us that if you can do a good job, if what God asks you to do is something you can do by your own strength, it's something that you can do by your own self, and you do a good job, that is it's not a gift. It's not a blessing. It's not a promise of God. If you can accomplish it by yourself, it's not a promise of God. It, 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 you, what, what you earn at the end of a job well done is your salary, is your pay. You deserve it. He says, but if the task at hand, if the promise is something that is bigger than you and you could never do it in a, no matter how well and how hard you work, he says, then that is only so, that is something you can only trust God to do. I came today for someone. God has given you a promise. God told you you were going to become something. God told you he was making you to be someone influential. God told you you were going to be, to, 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 to be an entrepreneur. You were going to preach the gospel to the ends of the earth. God told you he was going to use you and you have tried, you have looked yourself, you have evaluated yourself, you have worked so hard. He said you were going to be a millionaire, a billionaire. And you have been working so hard and all to no avail. At the end of the day, you don't have anything to show for. And you're asking yourself, how am I ever going to become a millionaire? It is practically impossible. God sent me here to tell you. That's because it is the story is about God, it's not about you. What God tells you to do is not what you can do for yourself. It would have it, it wouldn't have been a mere gift. It wouldn't have been a promise of God. It wouldn't have been the, 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 the prophecy of God over your life. It wouldn't have been the purpose of God over your life. No, God tells you what you are only going to trust him to bring it to come to pass. So they said the role of Abraham, what God told Abraham was not something Abraham could do. What God told Abraham was not something Abraham could do. Elder Fire, I see you. Was not something Abraham could do by himself. It was something only God could do for Abraham. So the problem is that most often we hear the promise of God and we try to help God bring it to come to pass. And we see that over and over again. And sometimes God has got to let you backfire, to let things backfire. You heard that you are about to get married and you started pushing the head pressing buttons to get married. You started making moves towards getting married. And God says, that is not it. You, you be, God said he was going to make you a financial giant. And you know that you have been working for years, but you are, you are not able to become a billionaire. You have not been able to become a millionaire. How can you think that you can become a, a sponsor of the gospel? Depending on what you can do, God won't have gotten involved. God would have allowed you to, so that you keep doing. He says, but when the promise is so big that even no matter matter how well you worked, no matter how hard you worked, you can never fulfill it by your own self. He says that's when you tend to trust in God. Elder Fire, are you getting me? That's when you tend to trust in God because only God can bring to pass what he talked about. Because you've come to the realization that only God can bring to pass what he talks about. God promised you marriage, your relationship fell apart. You tried everything to fix it and it didn't work. And you're at the point where only God can help you to get married. Only God can help you to restore that marriage. Only God can help you with financial breakthrough. Only God can give you that financial settlement that he talked about. Only God can make you. Those are the category of people I'm talking to today. The people that God has given you a prophetic word. God promised you something. And you found yourself in a position where you cannot do anything about the promise of God. That's exactly where Abraham found himself. The Bible says God promised him. He says, I will make your name great. And everyone that blesses you will be blessed. And everyone that curses you will be cursed. God says your descendants will be as many 
as the stars of the sky and as the sun of the seashore. And the problem is that Abraham was not just old. Sarah was barren and adding to barrenness was menopause. We know that the most fertile of women when they get to menopause, it becomes a miracle for them to conceive. Talk less of someone who is barren in the first place. Who is barren in the first place. So that wasn't something Abraham could do. That wasn't something Sarah could do. It was something only God could do. Because when God comes to talk to you, he doesn't tell you what you can do. He tells you what you cannot do. So if God had given you a promise and you felt like you heard God, God gave you a, a vision and you felt like you heard God. Pastor Richie, what God is requesting from you is more than you can do. It's something you can't accomplish by your own self. Then you know you are in the right place. You know, you know you are on the right path. The problem is that most often we try to twist the hand of God. Oh, Holy Spirit, help me. We try to do what Sarah did. Sarah evaluated herself, considered her husband, says, I'm barren. I've entered menopause. There is no way I can have a child. And says, Abraham, you sleep with my servant, with my maid, Hagar, and have a child with her. So that the promise of God can come to pass. Oh, thank you, Pastor Rich. I'm doing the best I can. So that the promise of God can come to pass. That's what Sarah says. And, and guess what? <laughs> Our father of faith did not resist it. Our father of faith did not even think about it. That's to let you know, the reason why this word is coming, to let you know, I know from the time God told you you were going to become a financial giant, from the time God said you were going to become a financial giant, I know things went sad and you have been trying so hard to do whatever possible to so that you can stand on your feet. And you have been trying so hard to help God bring that promise to come to pass. Rebecca did the same thing. God told Rebecca, said the, the, the older one shall serve the younger. There are two nations in your womb, and the older shall serve the younger. Because the favor of God and the blessings of God are on the older or on the younger one and, and not the older one. And Rebecca thinks about it and decides to help God. That's what we try to do most of the time. But the problem Problem is that the Bible says the arm of flesh will always fail. I feel like I'm preaching good, too good, better than you are responding, but it's okay. The Bible says the arm of flesh will always fail. So every time you try to help God, you end up in a mess. Every time you try to help God, you try to lean on your own strength. You are going to find yourself on the ground because God is not a man and God will not tell you what, what a man can do. God will not tell you what you can do by yourself. You don't need God to get a good job. You don't need God to do to get married. You don't need God. But when God comes and tells you, I want to make you married, it means that this marriage is for a purpose. It means that this is something extraordinary. When God comes to you to tell you, I want to make you a financial giant. I want to make you a sponsor of the gospel. It means that the finances that God wants to put in your hand are beyond what you can earn by your own strength. So it's for you to fit in the Bible says Abraham stepped into what God was doing for him. It means God can want to do something for you, but you don't step into what God is doing for you. Oh, then this word is for you, Phobe. Then this word is for you. Are we following this far? Oh, God is going to help us to read through. Don't worry. If we don't finish today, we run out of time. We are going to continue tomorrow. We continue. David confirms this way of looking at it, saying that the one who trusts God to do the putting everything right without insisting on having a say in it is a fortunate man. Mm, thank you, Pastor Rich. We are together. He says the one who trusts God to put everything right <laughs> without insisting on doing anything their own way is a fortunate man. It means that is to establish the fact that it is not easy. <laughs> it is not easy to sit and do nothing. Hey, 
Hey, Elder Fire, it's not easy to get to the place where God says, just tarry, just wait here. Just, just go back to the place of the first love. Just tarry in my presence. Just wait on me. It's not easy to get to that place. You see everything about your life is going down south and God is telling you, I'm lifting you up. And you look at your life and nothing is being elevated. And you are wondering, what is God talking about? It's not a good place to be. He says, you are a fortunate man. If you can get to that place where you believe that God can do what he said he was going to do. And without you having a say, without you telling God, do it this way. Without you telling God, I want to get married to this person. Father, God says you are going to get married. Your marriage is going to be a kingdom marriage. Alina, you are welcome. And you are telling God, I want then my prodigal to come back to me. I want to get married before this year comes to an end. He says, you are a fortunate man. If God can talk to you and you and you tell God, I am here, I am available. What do you want me to do? And God tells you at this point in time, you've got to write a book. At this point in time, start a YouTube channel. At this point in time, you've got to go out and evangelize. At this point in time, so, so a sacrificial seed. At this point in time, Abraham, you've got to. Come on, let's, let's, let's trace the path of Abraham. Liza Barasiana Baru Shakaliana Rasiana. Liana Barasiana Baru Shakaliana Suana Baru Shaka. Zibayana Nana Nana. Oh, thank you, Alina. I love you too. I love you too with every part of my being. I'm trying to deliver this word the way I'm feeling it inside. At some point in time, Abraham has to let go of Lot. <laughs> he loved Lot so much. Okay, is, the word is coming to you again. Okay, I, I love it when I start doing that. When I start getting personal, I love it. It means I'm on the right track. It means the Holy Spirit is at work. Abraham has to let go of Lot. Abraham at some point had to send his servants to go fight. And, and at, at some point he, meet, he encounters Mel, Melchizedek and has to give a tenth of all that he owned. He has to give a tithe of a tenth of all that he owned. At some point, Abraham has to sacrifice his own lesson. Oh, that, that, that's the one that gets to me every time. Because I know what it means to carry a child for nine months. <laughs> I am preaching and shouting. I love God with all my heart. But if God was to tell me, see that my little son that you are, that, see, see that little son that you are appreciating. If God was to tell me now, take him, go and kill him. I will say, I will rebuke it. It's not the voice of God. Get thee behind me, Satan. I did not hear God. That is not God. Satan, get thee behind me. You have no place in me. That's the same thing that we do most often. God says, sow a seed. And you are like, God, I, I, I rebuke you, Satan. I rebuke you for asking me to sow my house rent as seed. Get thee behind me. And God is saying, no, you've got to. You've got to. God is telling you, don't go out for a job right now. I want to make you a millionaire, but at this point in time, you've got to go out for evangelism. And you're like, what are you talking about? How will I eat? And God is saying, is it your business? I know our Father who is in heaven knows that we need all these things. And, 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 and we don't understand most often that God's way up is down. I never understand why he does it that way. But I have come to realize it from my life, from the life of from the lives of many people. Every time God wants to lift you up, He starts by taking you down. Every man that has ever been lifted by God, He started by, by, by taking them down. He started by taking them down. And how he how he took them down was their strength failed. He starts by taking away what you depend on. He starts by taking away what you depend on. Come on. Sarah feels like he, she, she is barren and she cannot have a child. So Hagar can have, is the one to have the, the child of the promise. And God, and, 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 and God brings, God tears up Hagar. And Hagar begins to, to, under, to, to disrespect Sarah. And Sarah now has a problem with the same maid that was supposed to fulfill the promise. And Sarah gets up and says, Hagar has got to go. Hagar has got to leave. Hagar has got to take Ishmael and leave. And, and Abraham is disturbed. Abraham goes to God and God says, yes, let, the, let Hagar and the child go. Elder Fire, I see you. God says, let Hagar and the child go. Because God starts by bringing you to zero. Letting you, he likes it when you are, because when you are down on, when your back is on the ground, your eyes are fixed on him. And the fire, you are just where God wants you to be. Not because
because he hates you, but because he loves you so much, but because there is so much greatness ahead of you. So sometimes God is going to let your back be on the ground so your eyes can be fixed on him. And then he stretches forth his hand and he pulls you up from there. So if you are on the ground, if your back is on the ground here, don't feel like all hope is lost. You are on the right track. Don't feel like God has abandoned you. No, God is very much with you. Sometimes, someone you have been asking, what did I do wrong? Where did I go wrong? No, I came today to ask to tell you otherwise. What if you are here in this position because you did something right? Hey! Hey! That's a word for somebody. What if you are in this position because you did something right, Anes? What if you found yourself here because you did something right? Because you did everything that God instructed? you to do because you are just where God wants you to do oh a friend of mine prophetess Amel said, said something yesterday on her status and it blessed me he said what if what you are going through now is the process that is taking you to the answers to the prayers you have prayed she said what if what you are going through right now is the process that is taking you to, to the answers to the prayers you have prayed in time past it's a process that is taking you to the promises of God over your life. To the prophecy that God had given you. I know I'm preaching better than you are receiving, but it's okay. Are we still together? Are we together? Should we continue? Oh, thank you, Alina. Thank you. I take the chance for her. It says, fortunate those whose crimes are cutted off, whose sins are wiped clean from the slate. Fortunate the person against whom the Lord does not keep score. Do you think for a minute that this blessing is only pronounced over those of us who keep our religious ways and are circumcised? Or do you think it possible that the blessing could be given to those who never even heard of our ways? Who were never brought up in the disciplines of God? We all agree, don't we, that it was by embracing what God did for him, that Abraham was declared fit before God. So Abraham did not even qualify to stand before God. Come on, just the fact that Abraham accepted the suggestion of Hagar tells us that Abraham was not fit. And this makes me very happy. This makes me happy. Because I know that it's not when I deserve it. It's not because I deserve it. It's not because I did something special. It's because I embraced. God said he's looking for a pastor to preach the word of God. And I, I, and, and I looked like one. And I said, God, I align myself. Father, what do you want me to do? Should, should I enroll into the school of ministry? Then I'll do that. Father, you want me to stop the career I was pursuing and, 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 and follow this course? Then that's what I will do. So I embraced the will of God over my life. I embraced what God was doing. And so I become the reason why you are gathered here listening to me is because I aligned myself to what God was doing. It's not because I am great. It's not because, no, if I refused to do it, God would have used any other man or any other woman. If I had said, no, God, I will not do this. I will continue with my career. God would have used any other, any of you would have been the ones that we are gathering and I would have been sitting listening to you right now. And I'm saying this because there is someone in the pipeline and God is telling you the same thing. And you are looking like at yourself, like, how can I do this? How, where will I start from? How can I, and you are thinking so much about self. And it's not about what you can actually do. There is nothing you can do for God. It's about what God wants to do through you. So it's about you embracing what God says he's going to do. I feel like I'm talking to someone that, whose name is like Richard. I'm on your matter. It's, so it's about God, what God wants to do through you. It's not about what you can do. It's not about what you feel capable 
capable of doing. It's about what God wants to do through you. Oh, Alina, I'm trying my best for you to get the word. I'm trying so hard to deliver it. So it was not for one minute. It's not like the blessing comes to some particular people. As a matter of fact, those that don't deserve it. Come on, Jesus went more to the tax collectors. Jesus doesn't want people that look strong, look good. That's why God had to take, take away Saul, King Saul. Because Saul was the kind that was full of himself. He looks good. He felt good. He, he was tall enough, handsome enough, but he wasn't good. Because the people that God considers to be good are those who will embrace what he wants to do with everything in them. Are those who will not depend on what they can do, but on what God will do. So when God tells you, go and destroy the Amalekites, you say, yes, boss, your answer is, sir, yes, sir. That's at your command. I am doing exactly what. So some of us are too intelligent to, for, for, for God to even use us. Because you analyze everything that God has told you. You understand your personality better than the creator. And you analyze everything, break it down, and you come to the conclusion that what God said he was going to use you to do cannot work. So you decide by your own self to pursue a different cause. And God is saying, no, you've got to embrace what I say. It's not whether you can do it or not. No, it's about you embracing it. Because God loves the people who cannot even do it. Because that's where his, that's where his glory is seen. That's where his glory is seen. When they look at you and they know that on a normal day, you cannot do this. And that's another reason why he takes you down. So that when he lifts you up, everyone knows. Oh, I'm trying the best that I can. Let's continue, let's continue, let's continue. Now think. Was that declaration made before or after he was marked by the covenant right? That is the thing of circumcision. Because when, when, when religion wants to, do, wants to talk, they tell you if you do this, then God will do this. If you live right, then God will bless you. If you are righteous, then the blessing will follow you. If you don't, do, if you don't live right, the curses will follow you. And it seems like you need to do something to deserve the blessing of God. You need to do something for God, for God to say he wants to use you. No, 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 no. I know someone, why they were, why, why they were deep in sin. Why they were living a life that was not worthy, that, that was not worthy to, for them to even be called a church goer, a tongueless of a child of God. God spoke to them. He says, they, he says, let's think for a moment. Was it before or after Abraham was circumcised? Because we would say Ab Abraham was in right standing because circumcision set you apart and put you in right standing. God gave Abraham the promise when Abraham was still just normal. God gave him the promise. God started the war with it. It was somewhere along the line that God even entered, started the covenant of circumcision with him. It means you. Yes, I'm talking to you. With all those shortcomings. Because you have been asking yourself, how can God use someone like me? Doesn't God know where I'm coming from? Doesn't God know that I have been battling with addictions? Doesn't God understand that I, I, I was a prostitute at some point in my life. It doesn't matter. God knows. But the promises that God has for you, they are older than what you have been doing. The, God, the word did not come to you because you deserved it. Are we together? Religious acts. Okay. Or do you think it possible? That the blessing could be given to those who never. No, no, no. I think I've gone. Okay, it says nothing. Was the declaration made before or after he was marked by the covenant right of circumcision? That's right. It was before he was marked. That means that. He underwent circumcision as evidence and confirmation of what God had done long before to bring. Did you hear that? Hey, 
The Holy Spirit just brought me back to the scripture. Live a life worthy of the call that you have received. While you were still languishing in sin, the call came upon you. So the life that you are living now, you are simply aligning to the call that has been received. While you still didn't know you are left from your right. While you were still living as a prostitute. While you were still living as living on drugs. While you were still a, a drunkard. The call came upon you. And now the, the, there is necessity for you to live a life worthy of the call that you have received. So it is not the life that you live that, that attracted the call on you. No. The call came to you the way you were. God, knew, God saw how you were, but he still chose you. Let no one tell you on the, on the otherwise. Let no one belittle you. Are we still together? Oh, God, help me, help me, help me. Where am I, where am I, where am I? He says he underwent circumcision as evident and confirmation to what God had done long before to bring him into the acceptable standing with himself. Into this acceptable standing with himself. An act of God he had embraced with his whole life. Embraced with his whole life. Thank you, Pastor Rich. He embraced it with his whole life. Are you ready for what God said he wants to do through you? Are you ready? Good. Sorry about that. Um, people are trying to reach me. I'm receiving phone calls. It's interrupting the network. It's Abraham is the father of all those who embrace what God does for them while they are still on the out with God. As yet unidentified as God's as God's in an uncircumcised condition. It is precisely these people in this condition who are called set right by God and with God. Abraham is also, of course, the father of those who have undergone also who have undergone the religious act of right of circumcision, not just because of the ritual but because they were willing to leave <laughs> they were willing to live in the in the risky faith embrace of God of God's action for them the way Abraham lived long before he was marked and circumcised it means that when we when you say before you say you are, you are you are a descendant of Abraham, it means you must have embraced what God wants to do for you. You see, we say things that we don't even understand. Abraham's blessings are mine. Abraham's blessings are mine. I am blessed in the morning and blessed in the evening. Abraham's blessings are mine. So before you get to that level, before you get to the level where you can say you are Abraham's descendants, it means you must have embraced what God wants to do in your life. You must have embraced the promises of God over your life. You must have let go of yourself and say, God, I want you to do for me what only you can do. Yes, Lord, I, whatever you said you want to do in my life, Father, I let go of my own will. Father, whatever you want to do, I, I, I say I'm in. I'm in. I don't understand why you chose me, but Father, I'm in. You don't look at yourself. That's what gives you the right to call yourself a descendant of Abraham. It's for people who can who are going to be picked from the bush like David and, 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 and they are going to be put in the palace and even though in the palace you are seeing the circumstances are not convenient you are realizing that you are in the palace but, you, but they are putting you down that you are in the palace, the oil is upon your head and you know you are supposed to be the king but you enter the palace and they make you a musician to the king you know this king, the anointing of God has left this king 
but you are still a servant. They still tell you as a servant and you say, God, if this is where you want me to be, then I will be there. You obey without even understanding. You obey without even questioning. That's how you align yourself to the will of God over your life. I came today for someone. There is a promise that God has for you. There are plans that God has for you. Plans to prosper you but not to harm you. Plans to give you a future that is greater than what you ever thought. I came today for someone. God has promised you greatness. God has promised you influence. God has promised you impact. God has given you big promises. God said he was going to use you. God said you'll be a model. God said you'll be an influence. And you don't know how he's going to come about it. I came today to tell you the first thing for you to do. Is to believe that if God said it, he can do it. If God said it, it's not about what you can do. But it's about what he can do. So you embrace the promises of God over your life. You fit yourself in line with what God wants to do. You position yourself so God can do what he wants. What, what he alone can do for you. I came today for someone. Kayana Balarasiana Barushaka. Lisa Branda Larasiana. Who says I don't understand what's going on in my life right now. I don't understand why I'm going down no matter everything I did. I don't understand but God I trust that you are still seated on the throne. God I trust that your words are here and amen. I might not see the financial breakthrough. I might not see the financial stability. I don't even see financial smallness. Don't let of financially great. But Father I still trust your word. Even when you could not see it. Even when you cannot understand how you go about it. But God you still believe that he's going to do it. That is the first step. That you embrace what God said he wanted to do in your life. That is the first step. That you realize that where you are is not where, because God wants to kill you. But it's because God wants to lift you up. God is about to lift you up. God is about to take you from a barren man, from a fatherless man, to a father of many nations. God is about to take you from being broke to being a distributor of wealth, to becoming a, a, a distributor of food. You are trusting God for food right now. You are about to feed orphanages. You are about to feed nations. You are about to feed places. You, you, are, you are trusting God for finances. You are about to be a distributor to what you are trusting God for. You are trusting God for marriage. You are about to be a reason where your marriage is about to be a reason. While other people's marriages are standing. But you might not see it. But you say, I trust you, God. You might feel that you don't deserve it. But you say, God, you counted me worthy. It is a privilege for me to stand in this place. I came today to tell you, it doesn't matter how bad things are. It doesn't matter how down you find yourself. It doesn't matter the kind of pit you are in right now. I came today to tell you, if God told you he was taking you to the palace, then he's taking you to the palace. If God said he was taking you to the promised land, then he's taking you to the promised land. You might find yourself in a pit. Trust God that it is a highway to the palace. Joseph, you might find yourself in a pit. Trust God that it is highway to the palace. Daniel, you're welcome. Thank you for joining us. There is nothing God told you that he cannot do. There is nothing God told you that he cannot do. There is nothing God told you that he will not do. As a matter of fact, if he said it, it means he has already done it. If he said it, it means he has not already done it. God is not looking for a way to bring to pass what he talked about. God is not struggling to bring to pass what he said he was going to do. God is not struggling. Oh, thank you, Alina. I'm doing the best I can. God is not struggling to see if he can bless you after he promised that he, he will bless you. No, God is not looking. God said, you go to the land, I will show you. It wasn't because God was still looking for the land. It wasn't because God was looking for a way to identify the land. No, the land was there. That was just because God wanted him to not go ahead of him. So yes, God will tell you he wants to make you a financial giant and all of a sudden you lose everything because you have been calculating. When God says that, you start thinking, if they give me a promotion at work, right now I'm earning $500,000 a, 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 a month. Or, I, I, so if they give me a promotion at work, I might start earning $1 million. So if I can save this amount, and you calculate and you say this is possible, what God said can possibly come to pass. And God is saying, I didn't tell you what you can, don't calculate me. Oh, we saw this some weeks ago. God says, can you please, he says, who can you compare with me, the incomparable? He says, can you please think about me without reducing me in your mind? 
Can you please think about this God without reducing him? Because when he gives a prophetic word, you begin to calculate like Sarah. You begin to calculate like Rebecca. And you come to the conclusion that it is not possible. You come to the conclusion that it cannot go. You come to the conclusion that this word cannot go. God made a mistake. That was a word for someone. So you don't embrace the word because you have thought and thought and you realize that. This, your, your job cannot give you what God is talking about. So sometimes in the fire, God is going to have to take that job and take everything you were looking up to and leave you at the point where you are standing and you look left and right and there is no help. You find yourself on the ground. You struggle to get up so life hits you hard and you fall back to the ground. You struggle again to get up. I'm preaching better than you are receiving. Why am I not seeing the dollar sign? Come on, you guys are not nice. A woman of God, daughter of Zion, is doing her best. You, you struggle to get up and life hits you hard. You struggle to get up, you get, you start a business and a storm hits you hard and the business crumbles and you are like, how am I going to get there? You struggle to rise on your feet again and something happens and your back is on the ground and you are like, God, you promised me. I came today for someone who is saying, God, you promised. You said I was going to be a financial giant, but everything that I've been trying to do has failed. Everything that I've touched has collapsed. Father, how am I going to get to that level? And God is telling you that you are just where I want you to be. You thought you can become a financial giant by your own strength. By your strength, you can feed yourself. By your strength, you can feed your family. By your strength, you can help one or two people. But what I want for you is bigger than your strength. What I want to use you to do is bigger than your strength. So I've got to get you to the point where your strength is exhausted. I've got to get you to the point where your strength is worn out. I've got to get you to the point where it dawns on you that you cannot help yourself. Then you look up to the hills from where comes your help. Your help comes from God. The one that is seated far above principalities and powers. The one that is seated upon the throne. So when you get to that point, you lift up your eyes and you say, God, help me out of here. Father, I don't know how to get up. I've tried everything possible and I can't help myself out of this situation. I feel like singing this word to somebody. And you're saying, God, please help me. I can't get out of this debt. I can't get out of this mess. I found myself in a mess. I try to get myself up and I get back down. I don't understand how to do it, God. But you've got to help me. And God says your marriage is going to be an exemplary marriage. He wants to send couples to you for counseling. And then your marriage goes sad. And you're struggling to fix it, but your husband doesn't seem to want to see you. And you're doing everything possible and things keep falling apart. And you're trying so hard to be a good wife, to be a good husband. But for some reason, and God is saying, the moment I said that, in other words, what I was saying is you've got to commit your marriage to me. Because I who gave the promise is able to bring it to come to pass. Oh, we are going to complete this message tomorrow. I am the one that gave you the promise. So only I can bring this promise to come to pass. And God is saying you are just where I wanted you to be. I want to get you to the point where you believe that the one that gave the promise was strong enough and powerful enough to bring the promise to come to pass. It doesn't matter where you started. Yes, your faith has been staggering. But it's okay. Abraham's own faith staggered. When God said Abraham was going to have children, Abraham laughed. That was not a laughter of faith. Sarah laughed. That was not a laughter of faith. Kala Zobara Siana Barushaka. It's okay, it's okay to try to help God. But I'm here to tell you what God wants to do for you and in you and through you is bigger than what you can do. I came today to tell you the first step is for you to embrace what God wants to do. Look beyond yourself. Embrace what God wants to do for you. Look beyond yourself. If he said it, he will certainly do it. You might not qualify for it. That's the reason why he chose you. He didn't come to you because, he, because you are qualified. He came to you because he's the one that qualifies you. Hallelujah. Did we receive the word of God with gladness? Where we blessed, we've got to go. We've got to go. We are out of time. We are going to continue from here tomorrow. Where we blessed by this word.
Oh, Daniel, is, is, all hope is not lost. All hope is not lost. People, we, 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 we have one to two minutes for our offerings, for our tithes. What's the instruction that God has given you? Obey. The first instruction is enter his court with his gate with thanksgiving and his court with praise. Never come into the presence of God empty handed. We have one to two minutes. As I'm ministering to people that need best one on one ministration, <laughs> my cash, PayPal, mobile money are pinned on the blue toolbar. There is super chat, there is super tanks, there is super stickers. Amen, Elder Fire. Amen. I'm glad you are truly blessed. Come on, people. It's time for your offering. If you feel led to sow a seed, come on, everyone. Come on, come on. Come on. You cannot come and be faith. Apostle Paul says, if, I, if, if you eat of my spiritual food, isn't it okay that you feed me with physical food? That's the right thing. That's the right thing. He says, if I feed you spiritually, you should feed me physically. That's a, that's a biblical principle. I'm not the one that said it. You cannot come into the presence of God just to receive and receive and receive. That's not right. Daniel, tell her, I pray for you. Whatever you expect from God, everything you are trusting God for, may it come to you in the mighty name of Jesus. May it come to you in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord's channel, I pray for you. I pray for you. Everything that you need, may God touch you in the name of Jesus. May God give you a touch where it matters in the mighty name of Jesus. Daniel, if God promised you, then trust God. If it was indeed a promise from God, then trust God. That's why you were here. If God said it, then he can do it. Everyone, I, I, I tell people, trust God for marriage. Trust God for whatever God wants to do in your life when it comes to marriage. Don't trust God for a particular person. Don't trust God to give you a particular person. Don't sit there waiting that only your prodigal will come back. God can have a better plan for you. Sometimes we might see what we, what, what we saw or, or hear what we, we, we think we heard, because we because we are emotionally attached to someone or because you you already are attracted to, to them or you love them already trust god to take over your life the idea is trust god for marriage not 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 for marriage to a particular person no don't limit your your chances with god don't limit god to a particular person don't limit God to a particular person. Amen. Amen. Are we done with our tithe, with our offering seeds and everything? Are we done? Everyone that connected with seed, everyone that gave an offering, God bless you for your seed. God bless you for your offering in the mighty name of Jesus. 
you will not miss out on the promises of God over your life in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray for you. You will align to what God wants to do in and through you. Your name will not be small. You will be great. You will be set apart for greatness. I connect you to your seat and I decree you will be set apart for greatness in the mighty name of Jesus. For me, I connect you to your seat and everyone that, has, that is sowing on, on PayPal, Cash App, mobile money. I connect you all to your seat and I decree you will be blessed. The blessings of God over your life will manifest. The promises of God over your life will manifest. Whatever God has said you were going to become, you will not miss out on that destiny in the name of Jesus. You will live to fulfill the promises of God over your life. You will live to see the manifestations of every promise that God gave you in the name of Jesus. Every word that God promised you, every word that God gave you, I connect you to your seed and I decree you will live to see it manifest in your life in the name of Jesus. Whatsoever has been stopping you from aligning yourself and embracing the promises of God. I decree from today the grace to align falls upon you in the name of Jesus. The grace to be obedient falls upon you in the name of Jesus. God is going to hold you by the hand and you will see that promise come to pass in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Let, let me share. Yesterday I started sharing with us a testimony of one of our followers. She had, I, I don't think I've seen her in our live sessions though. And I, I, I shared the testimony. I shared the A part of the testimony yesterday. How she, she got a prophetic word. I gave a prophetic word and that same day her prodigal came back to her. That same day her prodigal came back to her. Liana, thank you so much for joining us. You're welcome. You don't see the cash app? Check on the blue toolbar. Click there. There is a cash app. Pastor Rich, can you help with that? Can you help Liana with that? So that yesterday, that yesterday I was sharing with us with the first part of the testimony. That the same day that she received the direct prophetic word, she gave her confirmation. 22 o'clock that same day by 22 o'clock that same day pastor rich please attend to to liana she's asking for the cash up she says she doesn't see the cash up pastor rich can you help with that she said that same night her prodigal came back and he left the prophet was said he did the prodigal how they, they left her for another woman, for another person. And it was a spiritual attack because she had a dream in which she was attacked. It was an attack on her relationship. The prophetic word came and the prodigal came back to her and said she was, he was leaving the other person and he was coming to her and, 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 and made a proposal that he wanted to spend the rest of his life with her. And they started. She came further and completed her testimony today. And she told me the attack was so serious was so serious that she received a prophetic word about it in, in church. And it was not just an attack. Liana, Liana B, this is Richard Joba just gave you the, 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 the cash app account. So she received a prophetic word that not just her marriage was under attack, her finances too they, they were, were under attack. And the same time she lost her husband, she lost her job. And guess what? This is a testimony. The same week after the prophetic word was made and the prayers were made, her, her prodigal came back that very day and she said this very week, all of it happened this week. She said it is, it is, it is within one week, it's within, within three days. She said she got a new job and she's starting her, her new job this very week. So God restored everything that was stolen from her. God restored everything that the enemy took from her. She got restored her marriage and God restored her job. 
she she got a new job she got her she got her husband back and she's starting her marriage afresh and she's starting a new job at the same time what god cannot do does not exist and what god will not do for you does not exist i connect you to that prophetic word and i decree what the enemy took from you god is giving you back in the mighty name of jesus your own marriages are restored your own finances are restored your jobs are restored in the name of jesus in one in, in one week within within two to three days she receives her husband back and she receives her final her, her, her a new job opportunity she receives her husband back and she receives a new job contract within one week her life is coming is falling back in place but this took her it's been six months since her husband left it was six months of her praying six months of her crying out to god and it seemed like god was not answering six months i connect you to that prophetic word that prayer that you have been praying and it seemed like nothing was was happening god is reaching out to you in the mighty name of jesus you are the next person to come with a te- with your own testimony in the name of Jesus. You are next in line for a testimony. You are next in line for a testimony. You are next. Oh, that's the word for today. You are next in line for a testimony in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. God bless you all for your seed. Everyone that connected with seed. God bless you all for your seed. You are next in line for a testimony in the mighty name of Jesus. Olaji Day, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much for joining us. Oh, please, if you came, let just go back and replay so that you can be blessed by the session. And maybe you didn't have a seed. You felt led to sow a seed or you felt led to give an offering and you didn't have. If you go to my world, they they. The PayPal, the Cash App, the, the, the account details are always there. Or maybe you, you go through a prophetic word and it applies to you and you feel like you should connect to it. No, never resist it. That is sometimes that's the instruction that holds your miracle. Hallelujah. Thank you so much. Yes, yes, yes. Olajide. You are the next in line for, for a testimony. You are next in line for a testimony. Oh, thank you, family, for being a part of this session. Alina, you you, you were around. I was cool. Done. Thank you for each. If this was your first time, sorry, it's a time. Even the internet is saying so. I keep receiving phone calls, so they're interrupting our session. But we are done here. Middle. Bye-bye, people. The network is terrible. Bye-bye. Please subscribe if you haven't subscribed yet.